Are you doing everything by yourself on the shoot? Directing, composition, lighting, audio? It's a lot to think about, right? What if I told you there's a way to worry about one thing less? Your audio. Sounds good, doesn't it? But there's more. It's not just the audio. What I'm about to show you gives you the option for multiple audio sources, time code, and SSD recording, while still maintaining a super compact handheld rig. How, you're asking? Well, grab your camera, follow along, and let's talk about it. First, what's the point of all this? Well, as I said in the intro, as a one-man band, it's a challenge to keep an eye on everything that's going on during a shoot. And all those things are equally important to achieve a good result. So if I can come up with ways to minimize the things I need to keep an eye on, I'll do it. It enables me to put more focus to conducting an interview or capturing a great image. And I found one. It gives me 32-bit float audio with my Lumix cameras and, when I need it, time code as well. I'll talk about four different setups. Two will be for cameras with a dedicated time code port, like the GH6, and two for basically any camera with a 3.5 mm mic input. And you don't necessarily have to have a tentacle track E, as the thumbnail suggests. Though it is the most versatile, yet most compact option. I'll talk about an alternative at the end of the video. For the first setup I want to show you, I'm using the G86, this SSD bracket and drive that I reviewed a while ago, and the Tentacle Track E, which is the key piece of gear for this setup. Let me quickly tell you about these pieces of gear first. The Track E is a 32-bit float body pack recorder with timecode. I normally use it to wire someone with a lav mic for interviews, for example. It has an input for a microphone and a headphone output. But recently, this recorder got a lot more versatile. Tentacle came out with a beta firmware update that makes it possible to output a timecode signal via the headphone output. And this update is exactly what makes this whole setup possible. The SSD solution I'm using is a bracket that slots right into the USB-C port of the G86 and is secured with a little screw. It takes a housing with an NVMe drive. It's a really compact and sturdy way of recording to SSD. Downside is that it blocks all the other ports on the side. But more about that in a second. So let me show you how this all comes together. First, I mounted the SSD bracket and drive to the camera. Then I mounted the Track E to my small rig cage by sticking some Velcro on it and putting it on the mount I made for my tentacle sync ease. Then I connect this cable, which is a 3.5 mm to flash sync port cable, to the headphone output of the Track E and the other end to the timecode port of the G86. To the microphone input, I plugged in my Deity D4 Mini. The Track E can supply plug-in power, so the D4 Mini works with it. And because the D4 Mini has an extra input, I could also connect a wireless receiver, for example. Just know that in that case, you won't be able to record a stereo track from the wireless kit if it has two transmitters, because the audio is already being split by the Deity. Within the Tentacle app, we can go into the menu of the Track E and select what we want the headphone output to put out. We can select audio only to left and right, timecode left and audio right, or timecode left with a minus dB pad and audio right. For this setup, I'll select timecode zero dB left and audio right. So how does this work? The G86 is now receiving timecode from the Track E via the timecode port. So timecode is sorted. The audio from the Deity D4 Mini and the wireless receiver can now be recorded in 32-bit float to the SD card of the Track E. And the great thing about 32-bit float is that I don't have to set gain levels. We can just hit record and forget about it. 
And while this audio is not being embedded into the video file, it is very close to that because both the audio and video files now have timecode metadata. Super easy to sync in post and to replace the video's audio track by the 32-bit float track. Now, there are some downsides to this setup. The first is not having the ability to monitor the audio directly because the headphone output on the G86 is blocked by the SSD drive and the one on the track E is occupied by the timecode cable. There is, however, the option to monitor the audio via the Tentacle app. That has significant delay though, and is dependent on the wireless connection between the phone and the track E. Also note that recording audio in 32-bit float doesn't necessarily equate to recording good audio. It just means that we don't have to worry about clipping. Another downside is that if we don't have a microphone with an extra input, we can still only record one double mono track. Which leads me to the second setup. This setup is very similar to the first one. The difference is that there's no option for SSD recording in a super compact way. We could of course still choose to use SSD recording by using a regular SSD drive, but for the sake of keeping the rig really compact, I'm skipping this option. The setup for the track E is exactly the same as the previous one. But this time, the mic and headphone ports on the G86 are accessible, which means that we can use additional audio sources directly to the camera. We can connect a second shotgun microphone or an extra wireless receiver to the mic input of the G86. We also get to monitor this audio the normal way via the headphone output. In total, we can now potentially record four different audio tracks. G86 and Track E combined, all with timecode metadata. Again, this setup has its own downsides. Monitoring the audio from the Track E is unchanged. That's still only possible via the Tentacle app. And while we now get more channels of audio, the channels recorded by the G86 are not in 32-bit float. This means that we still have to set gain levels for those channels. Let's move on to a setup that will work with any camera that has a 3.5 millimeter input. If your camera doesn't have a dedicated timecode port, like the G9 or G9 Mark II, for example, or S5 Mark II, we can still make a similar setup in either of two ways, the third and fourth setup. The first option is to set the track E up to output audio via the headphone output and connect a 3.5 millimeter cable from the track E to the mic input of the camera. This will make sure that the same audio that is being recorded by the track E is also recorded by the camera. Setting it up this way means that we're not using timecode to sync it in post. Instead, we'll sync it by waveform. The downside to this option is that the audio that's being recorded to the camera is not in 32-bit float and we'll have to set gain levels in camera. On the upside, we'll have a backup audio track in case the track E fails to record, and we can monitor the audio via the headphone port of the camera. Another downside is that because we're not using timecode, it's no good for syncing multiple cameras. But what if we do need or want to use timecode with our camera that only has a 3.5 millimeter mic input because we need to sync multiple cameras or we prefer syncing audio to video by timecode anyway, well, that's where this fourth setup comes in. It's not too different from the previous one, but in this case, we set the track E to put out a timecode signal via the headphone output. The camera will record the timecode audio signal, which we can later in post convert to metadata timecode. So then, we can sync the track E's internal audio track to the video and sync multiple cameras using timecode. But how about monitoring audio? Because now we get this horrible sounding timecode audio signal on the left channel. Well, with some cameras like the G9, that's just how it is. You'll have to use earbuds and then only use the right ear earbud to monitor the right channel. On other cameras like the G86, S5 Mark II, and I believe the G9 Mark II, for example, 
we have the option to set it to only monitor one channel. So if we then set it to just channel two, we won't be hearing the timecode audio signal. But there's a caveat to that, which I'll get to in a second. This fourth setup has the downside that there's no option for backup audio. Though the track E will put out an audio signal to the right channel, even when it's set to output timecode, the timecode audio signal on the left channel tends to bleed into the right channel a bit, hence the caveat with the monitoring. I suppose we could still use the right channel as scratch audio. I also tested different splitter cables, but none of them stopped the bleeding to the other channel. Another downside is that we can't have multiple audio sources with this setup, at least not via the camera's mic input. We only have the left and right channels on the track E. I guess this also goes to show how useful a dedicated timecode port on a camera is. Now, what if you don't have a tentacle track E, but you still want a similar setup for the ability to record 32-bit float audio? Well, let's look at an alternative 32-bit float recorder that I think should also work, the Zoom F2. It is, however, a lot less flexible than the Track E. The Zoom F2 is also very small, records in 32-bit float, has a microphone input and a headphone output. So we can make a configuration very similar to setup number three, where we connect our microphone of choice to the mic input of the Zoom F2 and we connect the headphone output to the mic input of the camera. This allows us to record the exact same audio track to both the F2 and the camera, making it easy to sync by waveform, in post and replacing the camera's audio track by the 32-bit float track from the F2. However, this is basically the only option we have with the Zoom F2, because though the F2 can receive timecode and embed it into the audio file, it can't put a timecode signal out via the headphone port. And it requires an additional device because it can't generate timecode by itself. As we've seen, the Tentacle Track E is a very flexible little recorder with the new firmware. And the app is also a joy to use and lets you sync all your Tentacle devices at once. The Zoom F2, however, is a lot less expensive, but doesn't give us the flexibility that the Track E gives us. I guess the overall downside to any of these setups is that you have to remember to hit record on the track E or Zoom F2, but you could just hit record at the start of a shoot and let it roll. You can sync it with the video in post anyway. Depending on the situation, I personally use all of these setups, except for the alternative with the Zoom F2 because, well, I don't own a Zoom F2. I hope this was a clear explanation and showcase. Are you going to try this yourself or are you using a similar setup already? I'd love to hear. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I hope you found this useful. If so, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and maybe hit that notification bell. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.